Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I want to start out this week with a question, and that's how are you doing? How are you faring in quarantine? How's your heart? How's your soul doing in all this stuff? Um, if you're like me, you're struggling to some degree. Uh, if you're human, you will struggle in seasons like this. Uh, I can tell you right now, my wife is struggling quite a bit, and that's because I'm driving her crazy. She's had to talk me out of doing major remodel projects. Apparently having newborn twins means it's a bad time to do remodel projects. Who would have thought? Uh, she's found ceiling tile ripped out and trim gone because I never liked it anyway. And so yeah, my wife is struggling and I'm the reason why. <laughs> so, so those of you wives who are out there uh, who are feeling the same way, just know that you're not alone, that I too am driving my wife crazy. On a deeper level, um, past struggles and temptations that I thought were long gone and defeated foes have become present realities. And maybe that's something you identify with. Maybe you were gaining ground in the battle for, with temptation, and maybe as a result of quarantine, maybe you have lost some ground. And uh, I just want you to know that I too have struggled with you, although I'm staying on the road, and I just want you to know that you're not alone if you're struggling at times. And so I just want to encourage you to stand fast and to keep going. And that's kind of where I'm going today with this. Um, so I want you to know that I've been in the fight too, that you're not alone, and that it's okay to struggle. Um, and so you're not alone in this. I just want you to know that on the front end. Um, maybe you've had some past struggles and I, maybe they're gaining a foothold again. Maybe you've struggled with anger. Being stuck at home with young children with nowhere to go will create opportunity for anger. And so how are you doing with your anger? Or maybe it's depression. Is depression gaining a foothold again? Isolation is no help to that, let alone living in Michigan, where the Witch of Narnia has, seems to have taken over, and it seems like spring is on hold, right? <clears throat> Some of you, on a good day, maybe struggle to stay dry, and uh, being stuck at home for two months is no help in that struggle either. And so how are you faring, how are you doing in quarantine? Uh, statistics tell us that things are not well, that uh, porn consumption and alcohol are at an all-time high. Um, they're skyrocketing, in fact, especially alcohol sales online are through the roof. It's ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> all of those things are booming, the vices that are becoming a crutch in quarantine. And so how are you faring in quarantine? Maybe before quarantine you were gaining ground, and maybe as a result you've lost some. And so my hope is, is to give you some encouragement and to challenge you to keep going and to stay in the fight and don't give up. And so what I'm going to be reading from, I'm going to re skip around a little bit, and I'm going to read it, and then I'll give you the context. I'm reading from Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, uh, 13, and then 16. It says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery, verse 1. And then he goes on to say in verses 13, for you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And so Paul is writing to believers in Galatia who have um, given up ground that they gained in Christ. Uh, they were free in Christ, and they had given up some of that ground as they submitted to legalism, and were, in a sense, putting on, again, a yoke of slavery. And so for them, it was submitting to uh, legalism. They were giving up ground that they had gained. They were, uh, instead of living at a heart-level righteousness, were now conforming to an outward kind of righteousness, packaging rather than heart-level stuff, right? And so um, a, that, that uh, legalism affects the packaging, but not the heart. Uh, but the heart-level righteousness that Jesus calls us to is one that affects our heart and our hands, right? And so they had given up some of that ground, which is very similar to something that can happen to us in quarantine, right? Um, because who you were on the outside um, no longer has opportunity, and so who are you truly and really when no one else is around is becoming ever so more evident and clear, and so how are you faring in quarantine? We know from, verses 13, or from verse 1 and verse 13 that Jesus has called us to freedom. We are freed in Christ to pursue God. 
And so how are you doing in your walk with God when all of the things around us have been taken away? And so my encouragement is, is to use your freedom to continue to pursue God, even though church isn't available in a sense, right? We can still pursue God and grow in holiness even though we're scattered as a church because Christ has set us free. We have the word of God even though we can't gather with the people of God. We have his spirit who's empowering us and helping us. And so we don't have to give in to a yoke of slavery to whatever it is that binds because his spirit is not constrained by a church building like this. The Spirit of God is powerful and he's active and he's at work and he speaks through his word. And so I don't know where you're at and how you're doing and the struggle with the things that maybe were once a struggle and maybe have gained a foothold again, but just want to remind you that you don't have to give in to that stuff and that you can remain free in Christ. And I want to encourage you not to put on a yoke of slavery again and not to give up ground that you've gained in Christ because he set us free for the sake of freedom so that we can pursue holiness, so we can pursue righteousness, so we can pursue loving other people even though we can't gather with them, right? Thankfully, the Spirit of God and the Word of God are not bound by a building. And so my encouragement to you is to not give up ground that you've gained in Christ by grace, but rather to press in with eagerness as we look forward to gathering as a corporate community again. And so I want to read those verses again where he said, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And then he picks up in verse 13, after he talks about being bound by legalism and all that stuff, he says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Even though you have idleness on your hands, don't use your freedom in Christ as an opportunity to indulge the flesh. Rather, through love, serve one another. If you're stuck at home, then you have lots of opportunity to love those who might be hard to love at times. My wife is doing a fantastic job because I can tell you right now, I'm very hard to love at times. And so I am a gift to her to give her opportunities to grow in Christ by loving somebody who's difficult to love, right? And so um, through love, serve one another. And that's a great way to use our freedom. And then he goes on to say in verse 16, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And so, church family, uh, if you feel stuck, I want to encourage you to invite someone in. I want to remind you that the Spirit of God is living and active, and He's not bound by a church building. And so, if you are struggling with stuff, just remember that the Spirit of God is with you, and that freedom in Christ is still available. And your walk with God, Monday through Saturday, has never been more important right now than it is right now it's been it's never been more revealing how your walk with god is uh for now because who you really are when no one else is around has lots of room to shine and so i just want to encourage you to keep walking with god uh, to to become the person increasingly so who you're meant to be in christ because the spirit of god is still active and present in a reality and so don't give up ground that you've gained in Christ, and maybe you've gotten off track. Then I want to invite you to invite someone in. And I want to challenge you to seek God and open the word and confess your stuff. Invite him into the struggle. Your walk with God is important, and it's never been more important than now because all the idleness, all the isolation leaves a lot of room for a lot of stuff to get out of hand. And so I want to encourage you to stay on the road, keep going, and don't give up the ground that you've gained in Christ.